What is up guys and welcome back to the Hammer Dance YouTube channel. Today we're going to be making a video talking about something that you guys have been asking me non-stop since my best settings OBS 2020 video. I'll give you a second. You know what it is? You guys have been asking me for a full setup video on OBS um, and you know what? I'm going to deliver on it because if you guys want it, you're going to get it because you guys support me and I'm going to help you out. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to break this down. Basically, you just installed OBS. You want to start up. Um, I'm going to show you how to add sources. I'm going to show you how to add scenes, add your webcam, all that basic stuff, because I do forget that a lot of you, you know, maybe you haven't streamed or anything and you have no idea what you're getting into. So you download OBS and you're sitting there and you're like, OK, now where do I begin? And I forget that a lot of you are like that. So that's where this video is going to come into play. I hope that it's going to help all you guys. You guys have reached out to me on Twitter, Instagram, basically everywhere, sending me messages and stuff like, hey, man, can you make like a full OBS setup? Uh, video because I loved your settings video so much. So this is going to be a full setup video. Um, it may be a little bit longer than the typical 10 minutes that we normally do, but I'm going to try and keep it around 10 minutes. We'll go through the settings, you know, basic uh, settings. If you want more in depth, you can go check out that video. Um, but this is going to be a setup from start to finish. Um, you're going to basically install OBS, watch this video. Your OBS should be ready by the end of this video. You can hit that start streaming button and go live. Now guys though, before we begin, let's give a quick shout out and thank you to our sponsor for today's video, Owned.TV. Owned.TV is the place to go guys if you're looking for some fresh new graphics for your stream. Whether you're on Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook gaming, you'll find something that's a perfect fit for your brand. They offer full themed overlay packages which are great if you're trying to give your stream a complete makeover, but let's say you're just looking to pick up some new alerts, don't worry because they've got you covered there too. You can find single graphics such as alerts, banners, panels, and logos as well. The best part though about most of these overlays is that they are completely modular, so you can tweak the assets and colors to match your brand. If you're looking to take your stream to the next level, guys, please be sure to check out Own.TV using my link below to support the channel. All right, guys, so here we're taking it from the top. Um, this is my OBS. This is what it looks like. Just ignore the stuff that I have, like my recent events here docked on the side. This is, you know, for when I'm streaming in my chat here. Um, so when you guys open up OBS, you're going to basically have a clean slate. You're going to have nothing here in your scenes, right? So what I'm going to do here is we're going to, you're going to, you're not going to see me on video right now, but you will still hear my voice because we're going to delete this scene. Um, we're going to create a scene from scratch, and this is going to be called main scene. And I'm going to just put test in it because I already have a scene named main scene, right? Boom. Okay, now we have a black screen. So this scene is gonna be your main screen that you're playing your game on. You're gonna want your webcam on there, right? You're gonna want your uh, webcam graphics. Uh, you're gonna want your game behind that, okay? So the main way we're gonna do this, you created your scene, right? You saw me do that. You're going to, hold on, we're gonna go back. Now I want you guys to be able to see where I'm clicking before I click it. So we're going to go down here to your sources and you see the plus sign there. On that scene you just created, which is blank, we're going to add a source. And we're going to create a source here and it's going to be your video capture device. Your video capture device, let's just, I'll name it that because my webcam is already here. You're going to make your video capture device and you're going to select, see mine is called cam link because that's where my camera is plugged into. It's plugged into my cam link so my computer registers my DSLR camera as a cam link. If I select that, that's how you guys see my webcam. Um, for you, you're going to either select your webcam here or your cam link, have whatever camera you have hooked up to your computer. If it's a DSLR, it's most likely going to say cam link. If it's a Logitech C920, it's going to say Logitech C920. Click that, hit OK, and then you'll see your webcam. It'll probably take up your full screen like this, um, and then you can shrink it down and make it however big you want by selecting it, making sure it's unlocked, and then just moving this right here. Um, so that is something that you guys can do. But anyways, back to this. So you've added your webcam now. Now we want to get the display so that you can see what's on your screen. How Like how I'm recording this for you guys right now, you can see my OBS um, and you see me off to the side. Um, that is because I am capturing my monitor. Um, it's a display capture. So it's another source that we're adding. So your scenes here on the left side are basically different compilations of sources. Um, so for instance, I have a scene called full camera. So when I want you guys to just see my camera, I hit my full camera scene and boom, it's my full camera. Now you can still see my alerts. I will pop up an alert here just to show you what it looks like while I'm streaming. Boom. That's an alert. So this is my full camera scene. This is my, when I want you guys to just see my camera, I have my full camera scene. So now my main scene when I'm gaming looks like this. Um, I'm basically capturing my camera off to the left side. 
and then my game footage is going to be behind it. So you're going to come down here in your sources and you are going to add another source and you are going to add a display capture. You're going to hit display capture. You're going to name it, you know, main monitor, boom, and select your monitor that you want to capture. I have three displays hooked up. Um, so you're going to select the correct monitor that you want to capture and boom, you're, you will now be capturing that monitor, right? So here's the thing though, guys. Now, the way that your sources work, um, it's basically layers. So the way that you see these things listed in this list, that is actually them being on top of each other. So, okay, for example, my display capture is actually behind my webcam. Makes sense? Um, which is why you can see my webcam. If I move my display capture above my webcam, watch, you're no longer going to see my webcam. Boom. I'm gone. I'm a ghost. I'm invisible. You guys can never see me again. Just kidding. I'm back. Um, so keep in mind that when you're editing your sources, these things are actually layered. The way that they are is how they will be portrayed. So if you want something behind something else or in front of something else, make sure you put it above that source. It's extremely important. Um, so we went over getting your camera into OBS. We went over getting your game footage or your display footage captured behind it as well. Now. Here's the thing, if you're streaming with two PCs, you want to do a display capture. Obviously, um, this isn't a dual PC setup guide video, but the way basically that a dual PC setup works is you have your gaming PC sending footage over to your streaming PC, um, and it's basically capturing the display on your gaming PC and shooting that over to your streaming PC. Your streaming PC is then encoding that video and streaming it to Twitch or YouTube or wherever you're streaming to. Um, single PC streaming is a little bit different. Um, so the way that you can get the best possible performance out of your machine and you know use high refresh rate monitors is going to be um, game capture, right? So just for the sake of this video, um, we will open up a game. All right, guys, so basically just to show you what I'm talking about, I wanna show you um, how to capture a specific game instead of capturing your entire display because when you're trying to game at high refresh rates, um, like I use a 240 hertz monitor, so I've learned that if you're single PC streaming, which I do from time to time, um, that kind of messes with your frame rate um, a little bit if you're doing display capture, so you want to capture the actual game instead of display capture. So right now, if you're looking at my screen, it's black because I turned off my display capture. There's stuff on my monitor behind my webcam, but you can't see it because I turned my display capture off. I opened up a game called Marbles on Stream, I'm sure some of you know it, um, and I'm going to show you guys how to actually capture that game without capturing your entire display. So it's only going to capture that game window. So the way that you're going to do that is we are going to do this. Hold on one second. We're going to close out of this. I'm going to turn my display capture back on and show you guys how that's done. So you're gonna add a source down here. We're going to add a game capture and then see how I have all these games that I've played in this list here. You're going to just name it whatever, Marvel's on stream. Boom, hit okay. You're gonna click mode, capture a specific window because we want it to only capture that window. And then if Marvel's on stream was open, which I just closed it, it'll pop up right here. You click it and hit okay. And then that will be capturing that window. That exact window will be captured and you'll be able to have some higher frame rates um, and your entire display won't be captured. Now, when you want to you know, hide or make something visible in your sources, you can do so simply by just clicking these little eyeballs down here. You see my mouse. Um, if I hit this eyeball, you will no longer be able to see my monitor. Boom, see, just like that. Very simple, very, very simple stuff. So use the eyeballs to hide and show visibility. So we went over display capture. We went over how to capture your game footage. Um, let's just show a couple quick things before we go through and blast through the settings real quick that you guys are going to need to start streaming. Um, so in here, if we go to your sources again, let's say you wanted to add like, so you see how above my camera here, I have like my rotating metric that shows like my sub count, um, people who have donated or cheered to me, all that kind of stuff. That's going to be a browser extension. So basically anytime that you want to add something from, let's say Streamlabs, which I'll bring up right now and show you guys, hold on. Okay. So we're on Streamlabs right now. I logged in. Um, so let's say you wanted to add a widget to your Streamlabs. You're basically going to go over to the widgets thing and on the side. And what you're going to see is let's say we wanted to add a, um, hmm a tip jar, right? We wanted the stream to see the tip jar, right? You come in here. That's why they give you this widget URL for each one of them. They're going to just copy this. We're going to come back over to OBS. You're going to add a browser source because we're just pasting in a URL. We're going to just create a new one and it's going to be browser test. Take this URL here, paste what you just had there. Boom. 
and that will be your tip jar. It will pop up. I don't have one active on my stream right now, but it will pop up there. And when you get your cheers or bits or subs, they will all flow into this little jar. Um, and that's basically how those widgets work um, with Streamlabs or Stream Elements. It's the same deal. Um, I'm going to get rid of that because it was just a test. Um, back in your sources here. So we went over display capture, uh, browser source, game capture. These are basic things that you're going to need. Image is going to be, if you want to put like, see, I have my logo right under my little webcam. That's just an image that I added. Um, and your video capture devices for your camera or your other if you were feeding another PC into this one those are the basic sources you guys are gonna need to get started with OBS so that's what I wanted to show you and go over now let's go through the settings really quick like we did in the last video and from there you guys should be able to just start streaming so we're gonna go into settings all right in the general tab nothing really to do here but you guys know that if you're not using dark mode I never want to speak to you again so please make sure you're on dark mode no one likes any of this this other crazy stuff like that. I mean, this one's all right. I, I can mess with this one a little bit. This is pretty cool. Um, but some of them are weird. Like that one's a little too weird for me. I do not like the way that I, that looks. Um, absolutely not. If you use this, just get away from me. Please get away from me. Dark mode is where it's at. I use dark mode. Um, that's really all you're going to do in the general tab stream tab here You're going to select your streaming service. I stream on twitch um, The server I have it on automatic and you want to just connect your account there and it'll log you in and it will pull your stream key You don't really need to do that anymore like you, back in the day You needed to copy and paste your stream key in nowadays You can just log into your account and it will pull your stream key for you um, So select your streaming platform there whether it's YouTube twitch, whatever Output tab, here is where things get kind of important. This is really the most important part here, so pay attention, guys. In the streaming tab here, make sure you're on advanced streaming. You are going to want to use the NVIDIA NVENC encoder if you are using an NVIDIA GPU. It's extremely important. Just use it because it is going to be a thousand times better than the X264 encoder. If you are not using an NVIDIA GPU, I do suggest using the X264 encoder, which uses your processor for encoding. But the majority of you probably will be using NVIDIA GPUs. So if you are using an NVIDIA GPU, make sure you're using the NVENC H.264 encoder. Um, never check rescale output here. Make sure that is completely blank. Rate control, we want that on CBR. And your bitrate, please do not ever go above 6,000. Um, so if you have a decent upload speed on your network, let's say you have you know 15 or higher, um, definitely go with 6,000. Bit rate there, because it's gonna look nice. Your keyframe interval, put that at two. Preset max quality profile on high. If you do get some encoding errors, you can drop this down a little bit until you stop getting errors and your stream is smooth. It will still look pretty good. Look ahead, have that checked. Visual tuning, have that checked. GPU on zero, max B frame set to two. All right, guys, if you do not have an NVIDIA GPU, please set this to X264, following the same settings where possible. Um, and for recording, um, you the settings are a little bit different. You would use the same encoder and all that stuff, but your bit rate would be a little bit higher. I record at a 16,000 bit rate, um, simply because that gives you guys a nice clear video. Um, but, but streaming to Twitch especially does not allow you to go above 6K bit rate. So if you go above 6K bit rate, they actually dial back your stream and your stream looks horrible compared to if you were to just use 6K bit rate. I learned that the hard way. So never go above 6K bit rate there. Good general rule of thumb. Audio tab, this is where you would set up your audio devices. For me, it's very simple. I use a GoXLR, so I have one audio device set up, um, and that is my, this is my GoXLR right here, my stream mix. Um, but for you guys, you might have this set to default, which is normal. If you don't have a GoXLR, you're probably gonna have this set to default, and then your microphone will show up under a microphone device right here, which is completely normal. Um, do not get alarmed when you see mine. This is just because I have a GoXLR on a single PC stream. Video tab. This is where you can downscale. Um, if you do not have a crazy high-end computer, I do not recommend streaming in 1080 at 60 frames on a single PC. I would definitely recommend scaling that back to 1280 by 720 or even 1600 by 900 at 60 frames. It's just a lot less demanding on your CPU to encode that. Um, but for some reason, I'm having a pretty easy time. My specs are not the best in the world, but I have an i7 9700K, a 2070 Super, and 64 gigs of DDR4 RAM. So for some reason, I have no issues streaming in 1080p on a single PC, um, even playing games like Apex Legends, COD, all that stuff. So that's basically where you're at, guys. Downscale filter is going to be Lanxos, 60 FPS. Like I said, dial this back here. Uh, you want to dial this down to either 1600 by 900 um, or 1280 by 720. Your stream will look 
beautiful. Trust me, not many people full full screen streams on Twitch or anything like that. You're, like a lot of people are watching on mobile or in just like a window. So um, being in 1080 isn't really necessary. So don't do it unless you absolutely have the bandwidth to do it and you're not losing frames to do so. Hotkeys, this is where you can set up custom keys to do things in OBS, uh, basically like keybinds for any game that you've played before. Basically, just, you know, if you wanted to have a button that starts recording and stops recording, you hit it, select the key, and then it'll record that key press in there, and you can now use that as a button to control something in OBS. And in your advanced tab, not much going on here. I keep this set to normal. This is uh, basically how your PC prioritizes resources to use this program so you want to keep that generally at normal uh, maybe you can go to above normal but i would keep it at normal just to make sure everything is running smooth um, stream delay you can add an extra stream delay here you can add your automatic reconnect right there as well but honestly guys that's really it when it comes to the settings all right guys so i hope that that was able to get you guys started um and i hope that that helped and answered all the questions that you guys have been giving me but you know what if it didn't answer all your questions please drop some comments down below ask me anything that you guys want i will try and do my best to answer them um and you know hopefully we can get you situated and get you guys streaming but if you guys enjoyed this video please be sure to hit that like button that lets me know that you enjoyed it consider subscribing to the channel and turning on those post notifications so that you don't miss the next time i post a video and if you want to ask me questions or just hang out with me live i do stream on twitch mondays wednesdays and fridays 8 p.m eastern time and sometimes saturday mornings i'll drop a link to my twitch down in the description below this video as well but anyways guys i hope you enjoyed this video i want you to keep those hammers up and i'll see you next time